Let's hear from the coach. This is Behind the Beard with Bobby Smirniotis, Forge FC head coach and sporting director. Now, the woman who takes us there, here's Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. All right, episode five now of Behind the Beard. I'm joined by head coach and sporting director, Coach Bobby Smirniotis. Thank you again for joining me, and how are you this morning? Doing great. So what's what's going on with the smoke? Does it change anything about practice? We were just saying it's like a campfire out there. Yeah, it's been interesting because the last couple of days, uh, you know, maybe hasn't been as uh, prevalent in the morning as it is as the as the day goes on a little bit. Uh, but for us, just shortening up training a little bit, uh, not being uh, too long out there uh, because we are seeing a little bit uh, the effects of it, especially uh, in today's tra- training session. And we have to monitor it over the next couple of days, you know, keep that fine balance of preparing for a game on Saturday, but making sure we're doing the right thing for the team. Absolutely. And today I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of the team. In yesterday's Forge Daily episode, I spoke to some players who originally signed with the team back in 2019, including Kyle, Tristan Borges, Tristan um, Henry, how influential do you feel that their role has been over these past few seasons, especially when it comes to signing new players onto the team? Yeah, I think it's very important to have a, a nucleus of, of players uh, that understand the culture of uh, of this dress room, of the organization all around and, and what our goals are. I think, you know, that's the easiest way always um, to keep on uh, breeding success. Uh, these players have, have been around um, since the beginning, uh, in, the ones you've said, including Alex Janssen, and we're probably missing uh, a couple of more guys there. Um, but they've all had uh, good success and they've all uh, had failures as well. And I think that's important in the in the learning process. But most importantly, you know, it sets a standard when any new player walks into the dressing room. You know, the, the players, uh, the new players know uh, where to look for, for advice and how things are going when maybe they're not sure. Sometimes they may not be sure about uh, even the coaching staff and how things are, are working. And they can always go to some of these veteran players to, you know, get reassurance sometimes on, you know, this is uh, usually what coach means from uh, from these situations yeah. and so on and so forth. And I think that's important for new players. It's like a filter almost. Yes, it is. Um, from a coaching perspective, how important do you feel it has been to spend time with them over the past five years now? Like, to some extent, do you feel like you have learned and grown alongside these players? Yeah, of course. As a coach, you learn from your players every day. Um, we can have all the ideas uh, in the world, but uh, our players are the ones that usually give us those ideas. Uh, you know, and some are external. You come with your thoughts, but the other ones you come with the qualities of, of the players that, that you have. And over time, the, the players' qualities also grow. Uh, players uh, develop further. And then you have to find ways to, to give them new challenges and give the team new challenges, uh, which indirectly will, will affect those players in a, in a positive way. Um, So I'm always uh, looking at the players, looking at, you know, where they're improving, where they're developing, and that's how that's going to help the team. I looked at some of the CPL leaderboards this morning, and I mentioned these names earlier. Kyle currently tied for most assists in the league. Tristan Henry, second in most saves this season. So we'll specifically look at these two for now. You mentioned in earlier episodes that you've seen Kyle grow into this leadership role. What were the kinds of qualities that you noticed in him right out the gate in 2019 that have made him such a great captain thus far? I think he comes with a lot of experience at the different levels of the game. Um, you know, Kyle's always excelled in the different uh, leagues and so on that he's played in uh, as a youth player, as a collegiate player at Boston College, and then you know, he's been able to see the pro game at all levels of in North America through MLS, uh, NASL, USL, and now the Canadian Premier League. So I think when you come with all of that experience, you've seen a lot of what works, uh, what maybe doesn't work. And I think that helps you evolve as a person. I think that's the biggest challenge he put on himself if we look at 2019 is coming into a role in this club. Uh, where he would be the focal point and he would be the leader. And I think he took all those experiences that he had before um, playing the good and the bad and, and brought them to the forefront, not only to to help new players, uh, which everyone was new in 2019, but I think to allow himself to grow more. And I think that's made him a more complete football player as well. Yeah, and you can absolutely see that over the following seasons as well, not just in 2019. Now shifting to Tristan Henry, an excellent couple of games. What can you say about him is there something that you found has shifted this season with him, or is it more of like a progressive growth? I think what you have with Tristan Henry is consistency. You know, if you look past uh, the first few weeks of 2019, where he's been challenged on, you know, whether he's going to be the number one here after that period, you know, that's who he's been 
Uh, I think he's been the, the best and most consistent goalkeeper in this league. Uh, not only in this league, but playing in some very important matches outside of this league. Uh, and we've had the privilege to do that with uh, our 18 games in, in CONCACAF um, over the years. Uh, I think this guy has grown, uh, grown immensely. And yeah, he's always been a, a very good keeper. I think what makes him special as a goalie, and one thing we're seeing maybe throughout these first few weeks is... You know, Tristan has the ability in, in a game where maybe we're dominating and things are going way, our way uh, to be the goalkeeper of a moment when the, when an opponent will have those one or two special chances that they're always going to have in a, in a match. And I think that's what makes him special and that's what makes all top goalkeepers special. Um, you know, you look at some of the top rated goalkeepers in the world like uh, Thibaut Courtois at uh, Real Madrid. You know, everyone forgets he plays for Real Madrid and he doesn't have a lot to do but when he's needed he's there mm -hmm. in all the big matches and that's what makes him a top goalkeeper and I think Tristan Henry is similar in that aspect you know he comes up big for us in the right moments and allows uh, the rest of the team to go forward and do their job in scoring on the opponent. We've we've talked a little bit about how the players hold themselves accountable in the locker room and how the motivation kind of stems from there and I've been to practice and seen these kind of relationships that they've built with each other and I know this is such a close-knit group as a coach, what are the kinds of things that you do to kind of foster this team chemistry? I think some of the biggest things is uh, structure and discipline. You know, providing structure uh, in how things run and work uh, within their daily routine from, from coming in here, um, you know, and how they check in every day um, with, their, with their questionnaires, uh, what their workouts are in the day to when they get onto the pitch and making sure that everything is, is laid out for the players um, in training session, going from one exercise to the other, uh, working on our principles. Uh, and then you go after that, uh, you know, what they're doing after um, training. I think uh, structure is very important. And then uh, discipline. We ask the players to be, you know, engaged in the moments uh, they're on the pitch. We ask them to be uh, intense in the, in the right moments of, uh, of training. And I think... Uh, the players enjoy that. I think the players uh, feed off of that. And I think that's why as coaches, our responsibility is uh, to be the most structured and responsible person uh, on the pitch. Uh, and I think that gives them something uh, to follow. And I think that's one thing that the guys do very well. You know, within training, you know, if we're out there for an hour to an hour and 45 minutes, uh, you need variety. Mm -hmm. And on certain days in the week, uh, you know, when the concentration level is low and maybe the fatigue is high, you need to make sure you're getting the personality of the players out. Yeah. Uh, there's certain days of the week where concentration has to be at its highest, uh, but also to reach that, sometimes uh, you need to get some energy out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so you always need to find that right balance. Uh, and of course, uh, we like it to be business all the time, but uh, as you've seen on the pitch, it's sometimes it's a little bit lighter um, on purpose. Uh, and I think that creates a great mood within the, within the team and then you can get the best out of them in those moments where you need the highest concentration. Well, speaking of personality on the pitch, I spoke to them a little bit about the wheel system this morning and I'll hone in on the accountability piece. Where did this stem from? Did you Was this you? Did you start this? <laughs> You're shaking your head no. No, the <laughs> wheel system is, is not mine. Uh, what was mine was, uh, was telling them to, to get organized amongst themselves, um, to find a way to keep themselves accountable um, to come up with that, uh, to make sure that everyone is engaged and, and bought into it. And I think uh, that creates a, a much more lively uh, dressing room, a much more responsible dressing room. I think it's worked. Uh, we hear them from our offices, uh, you know, a little bit further away on uh, how uh, enjoyable it is to them at some point. Um, I was stirring the pot this morning. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I so, was stirring so the what pot. So what did you learn about it? I Okay, so this is what I know. There has been a new layer added today. Do you know about this? No. Oh my god! I didn't know there was a second there's wheel. There's a second wheel for for more intense violations, quote unquote. Have you had to spin the wheel? I do tomorrow. There you go. Supposedly. Tomorrow is Thursday. That's the day. That's the day. Okay. Is there a world where you will spin the spin the wheel, or are you completely exempt from this? There's always a world where I spin the wheel. If I haven't taken care of my responsibility and they ask me to do it, of course, I'm part of the team as uh, as well. Um, but it's. Uh, it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm not on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> that is all for today's episode of Behind the Beard. You can catch another conversation between Coach Bobby and I at the same time next week. This has been Behind the Beard with Mackenzie Barwell and Bobby Smyrniotis. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share.